Hello, fellow Scratchers. Today, we're focusing on adding text alignment to our Scratch text engine. That's to the left, yeah, we did that already, the right, and the center. This will get us one step closer to building those awesome Scratch dialog boxes. Also in this episode, I'll let you in on how to make the text follow the mouse cursor. So cool. And we'll update the engine to include scaling of letter spacing and line height, along with the chosen sprite size. And yes, I'll even try swapping out to another of those fonts from episode one. How hard can it be? And boy, it does look real sweet. So what are we waiting for, guys? Let's get scratching. And here is where we left off in episode one. As always, I advise we save this as a new copy, because this is episode two. Now remember that bug we experienced in episode one while trying to measure the width of the letter costumes? Scratch failed to bring that letter fully on screen. This resulted in the widths being reported too narrow. Well, I'm really excited to announce the Scratcher, mine Greg, huge respect to you, discovered a fix for this bug. So yeah, here the costume is left slightly off screen. Well, watch this. If we hide the sprite first, before we run the very same movement script. Now when we show it again, it's perfectly aligned on screen. Crazy! <laughs> Go figure. You can see the difference. So let's drop a hide block in the when flag click script, just before we calculate the letter sizes. But since the font is now hidden, we'll have to show the letters again as they are cloned. That's easy enough. When I start as a clone, show. The double benefit of this is that it also fixes another bug where you might have seen lots of flashing letters during the slow rendering of text. That is, without the run without screen refresh ticked. Double cool! So with our costume measurements accurately calculated, the result is that the spacing between letters will now appear too spaced out. Ok, so find the calculate letter sizes script, and scroll down to the add to width list block. If you remember, we added a little bit extra to this to account for the measurement bug. But rather than just changing the value, let's take the opportunity to enhance it with a calculation to let the spacing between letters scale with the size of the font's bright size. A font at 200% should have twice as much gap added than one at 100%. To avoid the line getting too long with the maths, we'll split it up, setting the variable i to this xx plus 240 take away x position, but we'll leave off the plus four, and then drop the i variable into the addition block below. Cool. So I want this gap between letters to be easy to change. Edit the custom block, adding an input named gap. OK. Drag that input down here, and we need to scale the gap by the sprite size. Multiply by gap. And on the left, a divide. Dividing the sprite size by 100. Splendid. Now for a one pixel gap between letters sized at 100%, we enter a 1 in here. Run the project and then click on the display scripts over here. There, nice and clean. You can play with this gap to space things out more, but importantly, if we use a bigger font size, say 400%, the gap of 1 scales up 2 and the letters remain evenly spaced. That is much better. Another fix that it's worth doing now is to handle unknown letters in our text. See what happens when I change this E for an accented E. My font doesn't currently support these extended characters. Running it now, and you'll find in place of the unknown specially, we find the previous letter gets duplicated, just like it did for the space letter as we were coding things up in the first episode. Find the define write script. My preferred solution to this is just to pop another switch costume in before the first, but this time setting it to the space costume. Then, if the next costume doesn't exist, Scratch remains on the one it was already set to, and doesn't change. Therefore, it will remain a space. And that, that is a much better outcome for us. Cool. OK, so on with the tutorial. How about we make things more dynamic, getting the text to follow the mouse cursor? Find the when flag click script. 
let's drop in a forever loop at the bottom to make the text move. We first have to delete the existing clones. Do that with a broadcast to clear font letters. And then to display the letters again, add another broadcast right afterwards. And the new event is named test script. Just scrolling over to the test scripts now, and here they are. So the broadcast to clear isn't needed here now. It moved over into the forever loop. Now we trigger these scripts off a new when I receive test script. Cool, no more searching around for scripts to test this project. Just stop the project and then click the green flag once. Ta-da! Brilliant. Oh now, if you are seeing only a single letter appearing, then that is because your define write script has not been set to run without screen refresh. For the remainder of this episode, I'd advise you to tick that box. Next, we'll have the text follow the mouse. Pop in the mouse X and mouse Y as the inputs to the right block. Oh yeah, look at this. The clones are being deleted and recreated at the mouse pointer. And what about this second line of text? We use a mouse X again, but we'll need to subtract an amount from the mouse Y to make it appear below the first line, say around 30. So that works, but it would be better if we formalize this measurement as we'll want to use it again later for sure. Make a new variable, naming it line height for all sprites. Then we can use the mouse Y, subtract line height. And where do we set this variable up? Best place right now is in the calculate letter sizes script. Set line height to and again, this wants to scale with the sprite size. So multiply, then you need to divide on the left, again dividing sprite size by 100. You'll see that a lot. And our line height goes on the right. 15 should do the trick for this font. Click the green flag to confirm, and yeah, that looks good. We can confirm that all the gaps and the line heights are indeed scaling with font size. So this is great, much more flexible now. Hey, were any of you wondering how this looks with a vector font? Don't feel you need to do this at home, you can just watch me, but it's useful to know how to switch the font over. If I find the sans serif font project on my tutor account, this is the one that uses the built-in scratch font. And what I'm going to do is drag just the font sprite into my backpack. Then, back in my episode 2 project. I'm going to save as a copy and name it native font episode 2. Ha! Better safe than sorry. So import the vector font sprite. And there's no scripts here, so we need to bring them in. It's faster to copy the 5 or 6 scripts over than it is to re-import all 90 plus costumes, right? I like to do it in batches a column of scripts at a time, and then rearrange to keep the order the same. Once done, just delete the old font sprite and run the project. So there you go. This is what it looks like using the built-in Scratch font. Hmm, obviously the costume sizes I used here must be quite a bit bigger than the bitmap one. But also you'll find the built-in fonts have much more space between the letters. We actually need to use a negative, negative two gap to bring them closer together. The line height is also too small. 24 will give better results. Then we can drop the costume size down to 100%. Oh yes, now we're talking. Just play with these settings to get the font just how you want it, right? Brilliant. And now, for the meat of this tutorial, the most asked question since episode one has been, how can we center text? Good question. At present, the text is left aligned at my mouse cursor. What if I want it beautifully centered? Very useful in a lot of scenarios. To center text, we want half the text to be on the left of the mouse and the other half on the right. So if we can measure the length of the text first, we'll then just need to position it all left by half of that width. And job done. 
find the right script. We want to offset this X position, but first we need to calculate the width of the text. Make a new custom block, naming it Get Width of Text, with an input, text, and run without screen refresh, please. The process of getting the width is actually very similar to the process of drawing the text in the first place, so duplicate those scripts into the new defined script. However, there are some changes to be made. Rather than keeping track of the X position in XX, we want to keep track of the text's width. Make a new variable, width, for this sprite only. Change the XX to be width, and start it off at zero. No width to begin with. Then remove the set Y position. There'll be no actual drawing done in this script, only finding the widths. As such, careful not to remove the change XX block, we can throw away the if clause. As you can see, that's only to clone the letters. Lastly, switch this XX for the new width variable. Beautiful, this script now loops through the text a letter at a time, adding up each letter's width as it goes. We can test that it works. Just bring in a get width of text block and try it on the letter A. The result is shown in the width variable reporter. 15 pixels for mine, sounds convincing, and AA is 30, double, perfect. The full stop, 6. Any string should work. So with this in hand, let's see if we can centre some written text, shall we? We want the alignment to be optional though, so edit the right block, adding the label align and a text input also named align. Okay. We start writing out text from the position XX. We want to change this depending on the align value. With an if else block, after setting TXT, check if align is equal to C for center. If it is, then we get the width of the text from the TXT variable. Remember, moving back by half this width will allow us to center it, so set XX to the X input, subtract half of the width, that is width divided by two. Just link that script back on, and then in the original text script, I'm going to set a line to C for both of these. And smash that green flag, Oh guys, this is beautiful! Both lines are perfectly centred on my mouse cursor, isn't that great? Oops, well, we appear to have broken the left align. L doesn't work. That's because I left out the default set XX to X. There. But not so fast. What about right align? We might as well cater for that too. Duplicate the if else, and we'll replace the set XX with the new if else stack. The second align check will look for an align of R for right align. And this is even easier than centering. We simply subtract the entire width from X, like so. It can't be that easy. Shall we give it a test? Left align, centered, and now right aligned. Amazing work, that will come in so handy. So we are working towards creating these awesome page dialog boxes. The next step will be to solve how to correctly handle text as it overflows off the edge of our page. The next episode will therefore cover word wrapping, and that is going to be such fun. I do hope you are enjoying this mini series. If you are, then please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel not to miss the next exciting episode. The same Scratch Studio is still open, so do submit your updated projects there so we can all see them and join in the fun. Right, that's all I've got time for. Thanks for watching and have a great week ahead. And scratch on, guys. Bye.